How's it going guys, it's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and review this thing, it's the second truck in the Tatra pack, uh, called the Tatra 805, and to be honest it's a bit of a silly non-serious, non, you know, top contender truck, but we'll uh, have a look and see how it does. Engine wise, I've gone for the uh, one that's like up one from the bottom, because uh, the IMZ6210, um, yeah, it's basically the same power to weight and all the rest of it, just a bit better on fuel than that apparently. Gearboxes have gone for the high range, I like that it's got that set of gearboxes. There is no raised suspension, but the ground clearance isn't that bad considering the size of the vehicle. Uh, tire wise, it's uh, got the usual other ones, it's got those custom MUDs, but that's it, there's no other version of MUDs. And then it has got the chained, but they're not the good version of chained, they're like the, uh, is it the all-terrain versions? They're not terrible, and you'll see. But yeah, they're, they're not the MUD chained, so I'll be jumping between the two. Uh, I suppose for the most of it though, I do stick to the uh, the chained ones. It just turns out that the chained uh, kind of go quite well with it. Well, the thing I do like with the custom MUDs is that they sit a lot wider, so they in theory help with tipping and all the rest of it, and I like the look of the MUDs and all sorts, so they're just not as good as they should be really. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, winch wise, I've gone for the strongest one, the advanced one. Uh, it's got engageable diffs, so they're not always on, but at least they've got them. Uh, snorkel wise, basically the reason I'd always go for the centre one rather than the two is because if you're underwater or whatever like you could be leaning to the left in the water and if that left snorkel starts going underwater but the right one isn't you'll still drown there's no point where water's going to reach that middle one where it won't have already reached those but there's situations where one of those could go underwater Whereas that'd still be just out the water, so yeah, basically it's just slightly better to have that central one. Like, it's not going to make the world a difference, but, you know, technically there is a little advantage, so based on that, that's kind of what I'm going with. Uh, it's got a little single sideboard, it's got that big thing on the back, which is pretty cool, it's got like 500 repair points and two spare tyres, and then it's also got a roof rack that's got 200 repair points and 80 fuel, and then it's got that big 900 litre fuel tank, but as you can see, it like bottoms out the suspension which it does on loads of stuff like whether it like yeah whatever fuel tank thing they got on the back uh, add-ons just a little sort of sun visor thing uh, got those light little fog light roof bar thing uh, as for the front bumper and everything uh, basically I've gone with the stock one because the two others stick out further and I just quite like the nice clean look like I, it's not that I dislike that with the sort of roll cage thing going around it but in my experience those roll cages don't actually benefit and it like if it actually acted as a cage and it stopped you taking as much damage and all the rest of it then cool but yeah it's basically just the look of it really uh, there's only one set of alloys with these custom muds and then all the different colors uh, yeah there's black looks pretty cool in black not bad in gray quite nice in white as well uh, that's the color I'm going for it just it does seem to suit it pretty well sort of uh, orange white and green I think the bottom bit is. I quite like that red one as well, that one's pretty cool as well but I prefer the one I was on about with the sort of orange, white and green. That certainly suits the look of sort of the age of the truck and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, so we'll take it outside though and have a, have a little look at it. I mean it looks like, I do think it looks pretty cool, again it's a little bit of a sort of funny kind of van or whatever rather than a serious thing. Looks a little bit like the loaf. Um, but yeah, with the custom muds, I think they suit it pretty well. When you're inside, you can see you sit pretty high up, which is good as far as being able to see over the front, but sometimes it can block your view up high. That mirror, I was like, Jesus, is that is that a mirror? Oh yeah, yeah, I can't tell with that. Pretty small back window, but not the end of the world. I mean, again, with this mirror, I can't really see anything. Like, yeah, they're pretty terrible. And again, I don't care because I don't really use first-person view a lot. View out the back, though, is just fine. I can certainly see my tyres, all of that garage door and all the rest of it. The horn I actually think is pretty good for the size of the truck. And it reminds me of like a train horn. But yeah, it's got a lot more oomph to it than like there's a lot of big meaty trucks in this game that have got an absolutely crap horn compared to that. Uh, I can't see a speedo anywhere. I'm not sure, I don't think there is one, like I, I was trying to have a good old look. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, I don't know if it revs fast or slow, I'm, I don't know. I was going to say my gut feeling would be it rev fast, but just because it's quite punchy and it can Jeff special and all the rest of it. There's plenty of stuff that does that looks like it revs slow and all the rest of it, so I honestly don't know anyone's guess, really. Um, yeah, trailer-wise, it's truck trailers, but it has no option of saddle high or saddle low, so it's only the tow along ones, which, I mean, you look at some of those trailers, they look a bit meaty for the size of this vehicle. The biggest thing that 
doesn't help this vehicle in a way is uh, the lack of weight. It's just it's extremely light. To be honest, ballpark what I think this is is a reskinned TUZ16. Like, yeah, it weighs hardly anything. It's got the custom muds. It's got crazy amounts of power, really, and it can easily just special. And it's a little bit, yeah, light and bouncy and flops all over the place and all the rest of it. Pretty funny, sort of messing around kind of truck. Nothing too serious. And then cutting through here, at the minute I'm in the custom muds, and you'll see throughout the night, like, out of all the custom muds, I think these are the worst. And, yeah, I don't know. I've always liked these tyres, looks wise. I, I use them, I stubbornly use them on uh, a few of my trucks, but they're just not that good. I mean, this is through mud, and they're not gripping really at all. I'm going uh, fairly slow through there. I, I think I did a bit of low range of diffs, but yeah, you just. Even in auto, you keep squeezing the throttle, but yeah, other trucks can go like fairly quicker through that. Like I said, the the thing that hinders it is it's, there's not really any weight to it, and what weight there is is in the cab at the front. In that sense, it behaves a little bit like the Zix, uh, the little Zix, like the little, I call it the off road snail. Uh, I can't remember what the hell it's called. <laughs> um, like, there's not a lot of weight, but what there is is at that cab over cab at the front. So, there's always, like, relatively quite a bit of weight on the front, and then the back is just skating around because there's nothing to it. I was pretty annoyed it glitched there, but basically, I was pretty impressed that I was able to hit the tree because this thing, again, because there's hardly any weight on the back, particularly, it just skids and skates around. You're constantly correcting it. Um, yeah, I managed to Jeff special and smash one tree down, but that stopped me dead anyway, so. 90% of the time I'd say you ain't even going to knock one tree down. But yeah, just because I happen to just special it and keep it in line and belt the tree. I uh, just managed to break one. A little bit slow through there. To be fair, most vehicles are. But then low range diffs on, which is fine. But quite a lot of other vehicles are kind of picking their speed back up about now. This is still feels like it's wading quite a lot, considering it's got the wide tyres on as well. It should sort of sit on the mud a bit better, and it doesn't weigh a lot. So, yeah, I mean, it's not terrible as in it's going to get through there ten times out of ten, I would have said, but there is a lot better trucks for doing that. Uh, went for a rock test, it, just because it's pretty erratic and mental. Uh, yeah, I crashed and rolled it. With this one, right, it was another Tatra 805. I had the off-road gearbox on that with the muds. I tried that. I've, I've tried plenty of other things besides the footage. I'd rather this video was nearer, like, 35, 40 minutes. It's gone on to about 50. There's, like, unless I just start fully editing things out. There's a few other clips I kind of would have liked to have added, but they're not anything crazy, so I can just talk about them as and when I get to the relevant um, places. But, yeah, I've done a lot besides what's in the video. Um, yeah, rock test wise, I mean, again, it's just, it looks like you're more at risk of bouncing off a rock and flipping the entire truck. I don't think I took any suspension damage, and yeah, it didn't really take any suspension damage. Part of the thing with it weighing subtle is uh, once you bounce on something, it'll just lift the truck up. There's not a lot of resistance weight wise. Uh, the anti terrorist barricade smashed my engine up on that fairly well, uh, the suspension and that as well, but. It does with a lot of trucks, because this thing can go pretty fast and I kind of just special into it. Yeah, the faster you go, the more those barriers damage you, really, so... I'm not going to knock it like it didn't do particularly bad or anything like that, it was alright. I'm um, going through here... Yeah, low range with the diffs on, I mean, in auto it... In auto through there, the rear wheels are flicking water up, but the front aren't, so it kind of implies there's more speed going to the rear than the front. Which probably makes sense why it uh, drifts around and kind of quite erratic to drive. I thought that current would have pushed it sideways a bit more, but it, I mean, it did a bit, but not that bad, considering the uh, lack of weight and everything, so it's not bad. Uh, the snow test on Northport, and this is where you'll start to see the difference between the chained and the uh, custom muds. It's extremely slow through here. I'm in high gear, but I do, I'm in high gear for every single truck I take through here, so. And then now you get to normal snow where, like, high gear it can pick up, and about now it goes back to super snow where you're best off dropping down into, like, auto or low range with the diffs on. But you can see that first section was more like scout levels of slow through there rather than trucks. Now I did this again because I don't know if it did or not but I wasn't sure if that post thing was like the sign I knocked over was sort of levering me over a bit but I managed to get the front over because I've got the snow grip to push myself over but now two of my front wheels are on the icy road I couldn't get the rear wheels over. 
So now I'm back with Chained, and as you can see, through that first section, they absolutely eat the muds for breakfast. Get to here, again, it goes now slow where you're best off in low range diff sun, etc. But then the difference is for the barrier test, on that side it can still climb and it's got grip on the snow, but now the two front axles, uh, the two front wheels, sorry, have got enough grip on the road that it can pull the back end over. And now going up here, normally I'd cut this out because it just, it's pretty terrible all the time. To its credit, it weighs so little, it's one of the few trucks that didn't just start severely swerving off to the right and sliding sort of down the rock. Uh, yeah, for the second sort of slightly higher barrier test, same thing though, it got the front over, uh, the front axles could grip on the road enough to pull the back end over, so, and the, uh, the muds just definitely wouldn't have uh, handled it there. But this little super snow test, I mean again it's not ridiculously far, I think I put it in low range then back into auto. There's not much difference between them, but every now and then when you get little patches where it's not super snow, it can take advantage of that more in auto, because there's more revs to be given and all the rest of it. I mean, those trees and that bush and that would slow it down a lot. I kind of squeezed over to the right a little bit. The only reason I sort of did that is it's a very small vehicle, so there is situations where you can kind of pick a slightly better line than a, that a bigger truck doesn't really have much choice. Um, going up this rock, I mean, it bit in well enough there. The back end skids around a little bit, but I think that's just lack of weight. There's nothing really pushing the truck into the rock to grip. But yeah, did all right. Jumped off there. Point being, with that little test light, the bumper doesn't stick out enough to where my nose just wedges in the floor and I can't drive off. Uh, going for this little wall jumping test, I was not sure at this point, like am I just catching one of those branches on the tree a little bit that's not quite letting my nose bump up but I did more testing than I'll leave in this video but yeah I don't think in the end. Mate I'm sure there's a, you could do it you know do it long enough and you probably will get one way successfully like at least get your front end over the wall um, in the end I did like a winch from the back of the truck to the tree sort of pulled the nose over that way I was just checking sort of balancing wise so it's around where those fuel tanks are is sort of the 50-50 weight distribution point I went the wrong way in these trees at first that's why there's an edit there I uh, got through that one I mean again I wasn't really doubting that this had struggled because it's a little truck. I did actually catch a branch and I could even see that from the other side, so that's why I quite quickly reversed up there. Um, yeah, it's like, forget that because it's just the branches are OP in this game. Get the right line though, and like I said, it's a pretty small truck and all the rest of it, so I didn't really think it'd struggle there anyway. And yeah, slowly but surely it climbed up this hill. Again, I've edited various chunks out because otherwise this video would just be yeah, a good hour long. Um, cargo test, I mean, you know, I didn't have great hopes in the sense of like it's a big old trailer to be towing with it obviously that looks like it did amazing on the turning circle but because the trailer's dragging it kind of lets me just plant on the spot and floor it while steering and I'll steer tighter but as you can see I've been steering left for like the last five seconds and I was still kind of swerving to the right which is a bit odd so uh, yeah when we get to this point I mean again I appreciate this trailer's a bit of a beast for the size of this truck and all the rest of it but I, it was just one of them, it's like, we'll see. I was pretty convinced it was going to get stuck. Which, yeah, it did. And like I said, there's no real surprise there. I'm not particularly uh, hating on the truck for that. It just, it didn't really stand a chance. It's too much of a small, light, yeah, non-serious vehicle in this game to be doing that. Um, long story short, I edited some out there because it was just a lot of winching. I kept trying e each time I winched, like, another truck length ahead, sort of give it another go. Yeah, it was just not having it, so... I winched it to this point where I'm past that route and all the rest of it just to see if now it could actually bite in and crawl along under its own momentum which uh, yeah just about still slower than most vehicles and I mean let's be honest I'd like this would be extremely low on the list of vehicles that I'd want to be towing around flatbed with I know I did in a video the other day but again that was <laughs> to be honest to to make a mission that would probably take seven or eight minutes in a, a good truck kind of make the video last a little bit longer because like I said yesterday it's sort of you have a six to eight minute video and it's like you're barely getting started before it's over and it just feels a little bit 
yeah, like, you haven't really got a lot done on SnowRunner in six to eight minutes. Um, I like to turn in circle wise, got around that corner just fine. I don't even know why I flung that winch out, just some kind of force of habit. Yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> I even abandoned the trailer pretty close to the beginning there, because I was like, there's no way I'm dragging this thing all the way down the length of my trailer store. Going in for the water test, the steering was a bit crazy there. I was actually thinking at this point, I could reverse and do it again, because normally I don't like it when they're, like... Yeah, I, you know, that wasn't as smooth as I'd like, but to be honest, the reason I didn't is because it's the truck's fault that that was really erratic and swerving all over the place as I went in the water. And even if I reverse and do it again, there's no guarantee that's not going to happen. Like, point being, that wasn't my bad driving at that point. That's just this thing, a bit like the Taz did and the Warthog and all the rest of it, it'll quite often violently swerve to the left or the right, or you just never know. Like, as I said, you're constantly feeding steering and acceleration in and out to counter where the hell it's going, because it's not always going the way that you are telling it to go. Um, got through that gap, no issues. Going down here was actually pretty nippy. Pretty decent. Even about, is it here? There's normally super snow here. And it, I mean, it goes pretty slow, but a lot of vehicles are painfully slow there. Or a lot of the crapper vehicles. Stuff like the Dolphin and that would be fine. Um, yeah, sort of the view from inside that tree. I mean, you could have put another tree under it and still seen the bottom of it. Uh, yeah, but as you can see, though, the view at the top is like, if you're going down a hill and that, you'll sort of lose more of your view. It's a little bit like, was it uh, the Ford Clit thing? That had like a big sun visor that actually kind of blocks the top third of the window. And uh, yeah, that was quite bad. That's why on this one, I already predicted it earlier, when I choose the sun visors for it, I chose the one that doesn't block the window as much, and you can't even see it from the interior. I mean, yeah, not bad for all that little section. Quick enough. Going here, though. It's one of them, like... It's not bad for getting back to its wheels in certain situations, but... Yeah, there's just no weight to it, and it's... Kind of tip... I don't want to say it's tippy. But it, it's between, yeah, the bounciness and the lack of weight. You could easily just... Land a certain way on the suspension, and then it'll ping itself over to the side. But not too bad through that. I think it sort of caught its nose, but didn't take any damage or anything. Through here, all things considered, there's certainly been slower vehicles. One nice thing about this is uh, it feels like the rev caps are very relaxed on it, so at least you can hear the engine sounds like it's revving like a mad one, and uh, it feels like it is as well, like there's a lot of your power being fed into it, so that's nice. I think, yeah, a lot of vehicles have just artificially been made worse by just rev caps that are too extreme, too harsh. Uh, flying into there though, I had a weird bounce and rolled. I just left it in because I thought it was a bit weird that there's like a random winch point in the middle. Oh, it's probably that lamppost sticking out of it. <laughs> That'll be what it was then. Never noticed that before. That's a pretty odd design having a lamppost sticking out in the middle of a some kind of oil storage thing. Um, yeah, went to drive onto the rock. Again, it just started swerving to the right and I didn't have time to correct it. So it definitely is a little bit erratic, but once I managed to uh, stay on the rocks for long enough... And the reason I tried it earlier in off-road, in the off-road gearbox, when I went to flip this on the rock test, um, I wanted to see if the slower range of gearboxes calms down how erratic and that is, but to be honest, A, I don't think it did, and B, it was almost harder to correct, because once it violently swerved off, you didn't have as much as a punchy of a punchy gearbox to power back out. You know, if it swerved left, you haven't got as much power to turn right and floor it out of it and all the rest of it. So I could certainly see why people had run the off-road, just to make it a bit slower in general. But I wouldn't really say it made it a smoother drive. It still felt quite erratic and unpredictable and, all, you know, and you're spending a lot of your life correcting it and all the rest of it. Going through here though, a little bit slow, nothing crazy, it got over there. <laughs> Again though with the bounciness I couldn't steer uh, left in time. So for the, uh, what's it called, Devil's Mud section. And I don't, I kind of put this, it's about super mud. But it's actually deeper than most super mud you get on the game. So it's bordering on like death mud but it's not coded that badly. There is vehicles with 
chained and normal tyres that can get through it, albeit slowly. I mean, a bit slow at the beginning, long story short, I didn't have high hopes for it because, I mean, look at the size of it, it's, yeah, the mud doesn't get shallower because this is a smaller vehicle, so it's going to be feeling it sooner than taller vehicles. Um, it got stuck about there, I stuck a winch to that tree and zipped my way out of there. So, long story short, I came back with muds, tried it again, and as you can see, I followed the same tyre marks. I even think I had a slightly easier time that time, because my previous tyre marks had kind of pushed the mud out the way that would have been catching on my bumper, but literally I had to stick the winch on the tree at the exact same point. I followed the exact same tyre marks out of there, so chain door custom muds were identical, and they both basically got stuck. If I just skirted along the edge there, I probably could make it under my own steam without a winch but it'd still be pretty slow. Uh, for the mountain test, the reason I came back with muds, I got up here with the chain on the mountain test and I rolled it um, as I went over here. Well, I went down, I did the nose test, I got caught, you can see where I, my little tracks are, and as I reversed, I rolled, so when I recovered, I just thought, sod it, I'll see while I'm at it. I'll, uh, yeah, put the muds on and see if that devil's mud section was any different. Nose test wise, I still I kept it pretty shallow there for the reasons I just explained. Um, it caught its nose a little bit, but nothing crazy. This here is probably a more normal nose test that you'll encounter quite a bit. And yeah, in that sense, it's fine. It got straight over there. And the reason I put this thing on the back, by the way, is I just thought maybe it'd add a bit of extra weight to it overall to kind of make it a little bit more sensible. And I think to a degree it does. It may also increase the tippiness slightly, but I wouldn't say there's much in it, if anything. Uh, yeah, going for the roll test. I knew it'd roll at least twice, because it's a smaller vehicle, so it's already done one revolution before it's even down there. But sadly, it went, what, two and a quarter. So to bring in the horse, which I did notice now, that should have flipped pretty bloody easy. The fact that it's dragging towards me instead of flipping is a bit of a shame. And then now, look, the game... Game thinks it had my loaf. It's like, yeah, right. This ain't no average horse game. This is a goddamn professional. You don't get him that easy. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm in reverse. Not really helping the situation, but we're all good. Save the day, of course, the loaf flipped him. It's a goddamn horse, get yourself a loaf. Um, yeah, for this section, to be fair, if I could just click my fingers right now, I'd rather have chained on. But that being said, I really didn't fancy going all the way back to the garage, putting chained on and making it all the way back to here. If it had chained, it, there'd be a chance it could have got up there. I might have to scoot a little bit further over to the left. The chain can get up on that snowy bit I'm kind of on now. But yeah, just sort of let it crab over to the left a little bit more. Now though, that wasn't... I was steering the other way, like the nose just not a lot of weight on it. It swung round too far, put me on an angle, and I started rolling. Landed there, tried to flip it with the loaf, it was just dragging the thing up the hill, so now I was just kind of messing around. <laughs> Roll it, one way or another. I did fire my loaf up. To be honest, I got the loaf out of there, but it was a bit messy. I got lazy, I just tried to fire a winch out, but it didn't attach the middle winch, it did the bumper winch, so I scooted around 90 degrees. Yeah, bit of a, a bit of a sloppy one that one, so got to edit it out, save a bit of time. Uh, climbing up here though, once I had like a straighter line on that hill, it, yeah, it got up there. It was skirting over a little bit to the left, but not enough to the point where it rolled. And now I was trying to drive along the peak, but the back went, it was going to tip, so I tried to steer out of it and by then, yeah, I kind of just flew down the mountain instead of sticking along the peak. And then with the other few tests that I've shown you, like, chained would get up here, but the custom muds again, which is the case for all muds, not just these, but I don't really know anything that these muds do that are that good, to be honest. And again, it's a shame, but I don't know. They're not as good as they should be. Here, fair enough, I'll let that go, because all muds can't get up that bit, but they're just not amazing for custom muds. Now, there, I apologise, I did lose, like, the first ten seconds. Long story short, it was very slow through there. I went low range with the diffs on, and the loaf behind me was genuinely pushing the back of the trailer the entire time. Now, as well to mention, normally I bring a four-slot ramped flatbed if I can't have a, uh, a sideboard semi-trailer, but I was thinking about this all night before I got to this point. Basically, 
if I brought a ramped flatbed, I know for a guaranteed fact it's going to get stuck everywhere and I'm not really going to learn anything. And I was kind of thinking, in the scout videos, I ended up towing this trailer, like the loafs towed it up the quarry hill and all the rest of it. So I just kind of thought it's out of its depth in this quarry with a ramped flatbed, especially when it's got two concrete slabs packed on it. So... Yeah, like I said, I, I, like we're not going to learn anything. I think we'll learn more by bringing this trailer and seeing, like, you know, how well does it fare with this. And knowing what I know now, I'm glad I did bring this trailer. But yeah, that's what I'm just saying. Normally, a fair test wise, I bring a ramp flatbed, but it's pretty safe to say that it wouldn't have done well with it. I mean, it didn't do great, obviously, with that one in the uh, north port doing sort of the cargo test, so. This is probably more difficult than that, if anything. Get down there, I was fine, didn't catch its nose or anything like that. You can see already now, once I get into this muddy section at the bottom. Yeah, it's just, well, low range diffs on, but it's still bleeding, some in wheel spin. And I actually think by now I would have been better off just putting the chain on at this point. Like I say, I still do like these muds for how wide they sit and all the rest of it, and it does help with tipping characteristics, but yeah. These tyres really are probably in the most need of a buff, really. Like, obviously they say better than the highway tyres, but highway tyres are highway tyres, and they're priced as such. These are supposed to be some of the best muds in the game, and they're just really not. I mean, now it's, like, barely crawling forward, and I mean, again, you can see, I'm glad I didn't bring the ramped flatbed, because it's not even got any weight in the trailer yet, and it's barely scraping by. Like, now it is stuck. I don't really know what on. Just stick a winch on anything to try and leave myself around a bit. I mean, there must have been a rock under the mud, but it don't take a very big rock to stop it, which you'll see coming up. Shortly, uh, yeah, so like I say, I also get to half the amount of sort of concrete slabs and weight in the trailer. But it's clearly like close to its limit already, so. That's what I just thought. It'll still give us a chance, like, we'll be able to focus more on the limit and what it can and can't do. The ramp flatbed is just going to tell us by a country mile what it can't do. And I already could have just saved this entire bit of footage and predicted that. Somewhere around now, I get s stopped, and uh, yeah, you'll see the size of the rock. That rock that's now about to hit the front trailer tyre, there. Like, it don't take a lot, if you know what I mean. Well, that's like a pebble. And again, I mean, I'm not particularly hating on it, obviously it ain't like... A Bruce. It's not priced like Bruce and all the rest of it. It's not the size of Bruce and all that, so I wasn't necessarily expecting it to, like, dominate at this point. Uh, yeah, low range diff song got to this point, and it basically started getting stuck. I think at some point I fling a winch out to the loaf, who, uh, yeah, starts pulling me up the hill. I just release it there just to see, like, yeah, not a chance. It ain't moving any further. So I sent the loaf to the top of the hill, just as, like, another mobile winch point. And, uh, yeah, just flung a winch out to the loaf. And again, with the loaf pulling, it's enough to, uh, yeah, keep me going, get me up there. I was letting off the winch here and there, just to a degree trying to make this give the, uh, the sort of lion's share of the effort but let's be honest, the loaf he's always given the lion's share of the effort and yeah, by as far as I saw it <laughs> drop the hammer loaf, let's just get up this hill I know what I need to know it didn't have enough power to get up there
And, I mean, same sort of thing, pretty slow along there, I was just kind of flinging winches out to that, at least once I'm at that point, I don't mind sort of using winches there, but it basically got to the point where I just couldn't move anymore, and I was like, sod it. Um, it's practically stuck, I'll unpack the cargo, because that now releases the weight, and as you can see, I mean, it is literally weight related, like it can't tow that much weight, or the tyres can't grip to be able to pull that much weight. And you can see when I click on pack, like, the trailer raises up a bit because there's not as much weight kind of interacting with it. Which, again, though, is a little kind of tip for those of you that are newer if you're watching this. Um, yeah, unpacked cargo weighs less than packed cargo, so... If you're in a bit of a sticky situation and you really can't be asked with the long drawn out way around it, then, yeah, give it a go. Unpack your cargo, you might be able to get it up a hill, around a corner, etc, etc. And again, this is still unpacked cargo. Got about here. See, the thing is, can you hear in the low range with diffs on? It's barely above tick over. But then if I go to auto, obviously I lose the diffs. That's the thing where, like, just diffs always on is nice because, yeah, they're on in, they're on in gears that allow you to have more revs. It's not really the gearing that's the thing in this game. It's how many revs each... A category of gears will let you have. You know, struggling to get the winch out to the loaf there, but eventually I got it. Um, once I pulled myself a bit further up using the uh, loaf and his little loaf hole, uh, this thing actually started driving on its own power now. And again, trailer's unpacked, so not as heavy as it would normally be. But I at least got to the top there where. Yeah, I stop about now. I basically rolled back down, packed the trailer, and then gave it another go now because uh, I wanted to see, like, well, maybe it can. Long story short, it couldn't. I had to winch on the loaf all the way up. And I suppose to a degree, you can see how much drag it was putting on the loaf just to get it up then because... Yeah, the loaf's tipped. I mean, he's good. He'll still fire up like that. But that's the thing, once you get to the top here, once my bumper starts going higher than the loaf, it just automatically starts lifting it out the loaf hole. But from that point, yeah, I can put a winch to those trees. So, I'm a, yeah, that's kind of like safety rope. Once you've got a winch on that tree, you certainly ain't rolling down the hill. Not unless you disconnect it accidentally or something. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it got up there, it was, you know, very slow here, nothing special, nothing to write home about. I got round that corner, unlike the Tatra T815 or whatever, or 813, whatever it's called, uh, but it just, with the trailer packed again, so I unpacked the trailer because it just didn't, it couldn't handle it through the mud. Uh, flying down here, as you can see, swerving left and right is a bit sort of crazy and erratic. Trailer goes, that carries me over with it. Funny enough, I kind of landed back on the cargo, and it was about the closest to ever kind of getting the cargo back in the trailer once it flew out. So sending the loaf, jumps off there like a professional. And he's all good. When I, By the time I got back to the this, though, the cargo had tipped back, which I don't know why. It was already like that when I got back, but... I thought the physics would lock it in place. I mean, yeah, look, this is how stupidly easy it is. The loaf could just push it, push the trailer, and it'd all flip like that. And now, you see, this is why you get yourself a loaf. Um, it turns out he had the autonomous on. Goddamn professional, because I normally bring the uh, advanced to here. But I was using the winch to sort of try and flip the loaf back. That ends up flipping the truck. <laughs> then it can roll down the hill. Loaf does, like, some kind of gymnastic cartwheel. Finishes with a handstand. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, I'm in reverse again. <laughs> I'm not good at remembering to take it out of reverse. I mean, this is at least a nice thing with a vehicle that weighs practically nothing. It ain't really any hardship to tow around all over the place. I've no doubts so I could tow it up that hill on its side and all sorts. The loaves towed bigger, fatter, heavier vehicles than that up the hill on their side with bigger trailers and all sorts as well.
Done. 100% rescue record intact. Uh, yeah, next up the ice test. I brought the muds because they sit wider, so I kind of figured it'd be a bigger footprint on the ice, which in theory should help. Um, yeah, I had no doubts it'd get over here. The Taz and that do, and like I said, this vehicle just weighs nothing. And the fact that it has got the custom muds that sit nice and wide, a lot of vehicles don't even get that option. So, yeah, I came back then with chains that are obviously narrower tyres and this box on the back just to see, like, I'd rather travel around with this box if I could because it's got repairs and everything. And, yeah, I mean, I turned pretty sharply on the ice there, so I did crack it as I went over. You're more likely to go through the ice if you have the chain on, but with that setup I just ran, it was still able to get over. Uh, doing a bit of Jeff special along here. <laughs> Hit there, went for a pretty pretty nice little jump. But then you'll see now, it's the only reason I sort of left this in because it was quite a good um, yeah, example of what I was talking about earlier with the snorkel. Like, the snorkel is now just out the water, but you see how the truck's tipping to the left a bit. If I had those twin snorkels on, pretty much guarantee the left hand side would be drowning now and then I'd be taking engine damage even though the right hand side is out the water. Uh, the flooded foothills river that I just kind of started using as a crossing. Apologies, a little glitch there, but I mean, it, it probably like a second or so if that. It's uh, It was driving pretty slow through there. Once I got to the middle, the current's trying to pull me to the uh, like just further downstream really now to the point where I'm not really gaining any forward momentum but eventually I kind of swept onto some rocks got a bit of grip and we got out of there so yeah it's squeeze but I mean it's one of them again I wouldn't highly recommend it for crossing deep rivers uh, this mud and that though yeah I mean it's these tyres ain't up to it really it's acts like a, all the normal standard tyres that aren't that great uh, this is kind of that new rock test in Erska since it's quite a handy place to be honest. Slowed me down at first but they, these rocks are pretty massive and I did get fully sort of beached on the first one but it got itself off. Um, and yeah as you can see now it almost <laughs> kind of launched itself over them there. I mean not terrible considering it's a fairly small vehicle and they are some pretty bloody meaty uh, rocks. Yeah it was doing alright. And again I do think it would have been worse with the custom was just that's one of the things that the chain are pretty good at biting over the rocks. See, that's how easy it can tip, however what I do like is once you tip like onto your roof and you keep going you should flick yourself back to your wheels which is like the loaf's very good at that. Well the loaf's still the champion at that I would say. Um, it wouldn't Jeff special properly there so right at the end it kind of slowed down. And you see, get an awkward bounce like the loaf wouldn't do that. Too much of a, a professional for that one. Um, so, turn all wheel drive off though and Jeff special it. And then it, uh, it works. I'm trying to obviously hit the right bit, but I've got to try and avoid them posts and all sorts. I don't hit my aviation fuel. We're all good. For some reason though, this back end is pretty keen on just staying sticking in the air, which isn't helping because it's kind of self drowning it because it was making the uh, snorkel go underwater. Finally got out and it dropped down. See, this was just showing you, look, I can't pull off in high gear. There's another use for a loaf. There's a bump start loaf. He bump starts me, now I can set off in high gear. And then I think that's, I don't know, crackhead loaf. He gets pretty violent from time to time. Uh, yeah, it's extremely easy. Again, apologies, it's a tiny little glitch right at the worst moment, but it's ridiculously easy to tip back over, just give it a nudge. It's good to go. <laughs> It did terribly there. I was like, oh my god. Didn't even make it off the cliff. Now, of course, it... Well, I don't know. I was going to say it might be easier to just recover it and drive back, but I like doing me low for rescues, so this to me. This is what I'd rather do, but you see, this is why I bring a loaf everywhere. I still get asked that question, because he's a goddamn professional. Typical, like, I can catch on this post normally, but one time though I want to. The loaf manages to just scoot over it. But he's got more tricks up his sleeve than that, but yeah, still. Like, why do I always hit them? Why do I never clear them when I want to? And then when I want to hit it, I clear it. I didn't realise for a while at first, I can't even see it at the minute because it shrinks the screen, but I didn't have the engine turned on, so. This lazy thing was trying to make my loaf do all the work. 
which is fine, but I just need some drive in the wheels so it goes up the cliff, not me trying to rip it into the cliff. Again, if the winch cable didn't kind of phase through the rocks and it laid on top of the rocks, it'd be quite a lot of situations where that'd help and be a bit more realistic. And um, basically there, I went to switch, I uh, switched to the, this, I went to click the winches and I hit bloody recover because it was on that on the menu. So I had to drive it back, but then by chance, I kind of had a nice, nice little Jeff special on the go. So that's why the loaf was there, just for that one. And then I had to recover it again <laughs> and come back. And then yeah, uh, went for it. attempt number two, jumping off the cliff with a loaf. I mean again, it's just not good, as soon as it gets to the end. And you see again, the loaf just definitely would have landed on its wheels there. So, time to send him in. He'll have to jump off himself since this thing can't tow it off. You see? So, we've all got tricks. We can all jump around. Didn't do his engine any favours on the way down. Again, it's that new engine that's got sod all points on it, really. I mean, when you look at both those together, the loaf isn't that much smaller at all than this. Which, again, is one of those reasons why I took the two-slot trailer to the quarry and that, because it is closer to a scout, really, than a truck. So is the Taz and all that. Uh, for the drowning test, gets this far in. Again, you can see the snorkel there in the middle, which, if I had the double snorkels, the one on the left would be drowning by now. Uh, it's pretty much the whole truck underwater. That add-on on the back, obviously, if I didn't have that on. I assume that little thing is like an escape hatch on the roof. Which I'm guessing in Russia, I don't know, maybe if there's like, you tip or there's some weird snow drift you're stuck in, you can uh, get out of it. Uh, just going for a full-on drowning test now, sort of driving it in the water. Start taking a bit of damage, but then about now it starts to sort of wheelie and rise back out a little bit. And I'm taking a little bit of damage, but the engine's actually got quite a lot of health on it. I'm sure it's something like 240 points, which is a lot. So if I was, if I was cutting through water and taking 7 to 17 damage a time, it'd, uh, I'd be able to make it quite far before the engine's dead. Taking a bit more now. I mean, eventually, because the vehicle's not that tall or long or anything, it's sort of... This water keeps getting deeper, but... This thing's already at kind of maximum tiptoeing, so... Yeah, it drowned. Sending the horse, of course, for a rescue. And even when the thing's dead and it's not helping at all, that's just pure loaf power. Uh, yeah, it's a piece of piss to tow back out of there. So easy, in fact, I just carried on towing it all the way to here. And I didn't have high hopes for this test because... Uh, again, the vehicle's just not that big and it's not that long. That is not what she said. Um, yeah, put the loaf on the rear. I mean, that's nice. The loaf can fit on there. You can pack it. And it was looking alright at the start. So I've taken some pretty fat chunks of engine damage, so about now it's like fair enough. Uh, unpack the loaf, stick a zombie winch on it. And again, at first, like, oh, this is alright. I think we might make it. It's even not really doing like start, stop, start, stop with the zombie winch. It's kind of quite smooth and just travelling forward. Which the Tatra other one, T813 or whatever it is, that was doing as well. But yeah, basically now it got too deep to the point where it's floating. And then the nose of it just comes up. In fact, you'll see in a minute, it's like flipped it round to where the, uh, yeah, it's almost tipped upside down. So not successful with that. And basically at that point, I then went back there with uh, that fuel add-on on the back to add more weight. Um, it did the same result, but then my, not only did the game crash, my computer must have freaked out. It black screened, turned the computer off. When I loaded the computer up, uh, it said corrupted PS4 files, had to restore that. Then it said corrupted extended storage, had to restore that. Then I had to restore something to be able to play this game, because it had a warning triangle where the game was. And then when I loaded this up, it said your save file was corrupted. Like, I don't know what happened, but 
super killed my uh, my PS4. Uh, there, I was basically showing you just before I got to this mountain, like how well, relatively speaking, this drove through the snow on the way there. That'll become more relevant in a minute. Uh, as for going up this hill, it certainly got up the mountain a lot quicker than quite a few trucks. Uh, yeah, got to the top though, got a bit squirrely, started tipping, so now went flying down the hill. I think I took hardly any engine damage or anything. I just so happened to keep landing on like bits of the truck that don't take damage. This is why I mention it. This is now coming back with muds. Uh, like I said, they sit a bit wider, so I thought it might help with the tipping on the mountain. But, I mean, just look how much more aggro it is to get down here. They're fishtailing all over the place. They're slower through the mud. They don't respond as well if I sort of start skidding left or right and getting a bit of a tank slapper. Now they swing that way. Now I hit this little patch of mud or snow or whatever and it goes insanely slow. Like, yeah. And I, again, I like these muds looks-wise and all the rest of it and I try to force myself to use them on quite a lot of stuff but they're just disappointing. They are on the Bandit, they are on the Tager really. The Tager's not bad, the Tager probably makes the best use of them. Uh, going up here, though, you can see it's slower in these muds, but, like I said, they sit wider. So I was hoping that would help as far as tipping goes. And that's what I sort of need to get to that patch of snow when you got the muds. The chain could pretty much go up the rocks, but, yeah. That little patch of snow is a little lifesaver when you got the muds on. After that, though, yeah, you can sort of climb up this route, skirt along the edge, and then get, once you're onto this little snow patch on the top, you're all good. So it made it. And the muds did help in that sense. Like, they, uh, balance-wise, I reckon they helped a bit. I probably could have took the exact same route in the chain, but regardless, clearly they widen your sort of footprint and help. I only left that bit, and I was rolling down there, left, like, two perfect prints of the uh, truck. I was quite happy with that, if I'm honest. Yeah, there's no point in going down the other side to try and ram that meaty tree, because a lot there's only like the Zicks and a few others that can break that tree. This thing ain't got a hope in hell. Jeff Special or no Jeff Special. A little bit lucky again, but sort of bumped into that tree as I was about landing on my wheels and we're all good. So uh, yeah, recover it to garage. I think my re remote was playing up then. I had to keep smacking it to get the down on the D-pad to work. I mean yeah, long story short, it's a bit of a silly mad vehicle. If you've got this truck pack, you're going to kind of get this. I mean long story short, let's be honest, they like the Tatra T813 is the main thing. They could have sold that for about three quid, put it in a pack, they've now just got another two quid out of you for this thing. On its own, you know, I probably wouldn't be desperate to buy it. Well, I probably would because I make videos and all the rest of it. But yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a silly truck. It probably is just a reskin Taz. Um, 76 odd grand or whatever it was. Not too bad. Like, stock, it's about 40 grand. So as much as a fully upgraded loaf, I'd certainly rather. Yeah, some people said it's like a loaf on steroids. I don't know, more of a loaf on crack. It's funny and all the rest of it, but the low fight certainly ain't going to replace it but if you did take it with you there's plenty of repair points and all the rest of it so yeah I mean it's one of them like I said a bit of a funny silly truck anyway that's about it for today though I hope you enjoyed I hope that helps thanks for watching thanks to our Patreon members get yourself a loaf and I'll be back soon